easily possible, and it's easily possible by a variety of different techniques. A lot of polyethylene parts are injection molded. You can certainly do that. Okay, you can you could process polyethylene through blow molding. A lot of the bottles that we see are blow molded. You can process polyethylene through thermoforming. So, um, you know, there you might do, for example, one application of thermoforming for polyethylene is going to be porta potties. Um, you know, it you might see at the stadium or at the concert. Uh, those are our thermoform from polyethylene. You can you can certainly do that. Again, impact resistance, low temperature resistance um, in that application. Uh, you can extrude polyethylene as you would for cable or for tubes, pipes. Uh, you can machine polyethylene, and you need to for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, but also for uh, high density polyethylene. The so the lower you go in crystallinity, the the more difficult, the more gummy. Uh, the material gets and the more difficult it is to be able to machine. But ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, high density polyethylene, machine reasonably well. Some business considerations, let's talk about those. Um, the global polyethylene market is growing, growing at a rate of about 4% during you know the next few years is what it's projected to do. Now, that's not a great growth rate. And one of the things that, that are, that's happening, ha hampering that that, that growth is the volatility in prices of raw materials uh, together with product commoditization, okay? That's, a, again, a negative. Viewed as that if we can't get this polyethylene, we'll just get this one. That leads to price erosion. Now that, that again, can be good and it can be bad depending on where you sit, but that whole view that one polyethylene grade is as good as another is, is bad overall for the industry, okay? Some of the raw materials used to produce polyethylene include ethane, propane, naphtha, natural gas, and fluctuations within, um, within these raw materials have, have hampered the price of polyethylene. Polyethylene does compete against polypropylene, and polypropylene tends to be lower cost material. So that's something that, that, that hampers or you know, interferes with the use of polyethylene. There are a number of, of polyethylene producers, and this is just some of the top producers worldwide. It truly is a, a worldwide market uh, for polyethylene. And that's what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, polyethylene is moving from North America uh, to Asia, from Asia to Europe, to Europe to South America. I mean, there's just, polyethylene is, is, is growing everywhere. It's being manufactured globally and it's being consumed globally. Finally, what I want to leave you with is just a few things that are going on, kind of some innovations, I would say, within the polyethylene. The one that seems to be the, the gathering the most steam right now, which is the most gathering the most interest, is, is what's called biopolyethylene. Uh, essentially, um, there are two ways that materials can be, can be green friendly, okay? They can either be um, recyclable or, I'm sorry, they could be compostable or they can be made from green materials. What this is, this bio polyethylene that we're going to talk about here a little bit is it's it's made from green materials. Essentially, what they're doing is they're they're making uh, the bio polyethylene out of out of ethanol, okay, which is produced from sugarcane in Brazil is where they're getting one of the major feedstocks right now. Now that that is controversial because you're taking a food product and you're converting it into something else. Uh, but but again, this is an area that as people look to be green and 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 um, you know be able to um, you know, cut down uh, greenhouse gases and things like that. Where can we, you know, where can we get materials? And if we can uh, reduce our dependence on on traditional fossil type fuels, um, one feed source certainly then would be would be ethanol, which comes from corn or from sugarcane. So that's that's an area that some research is being done in right now. Um, another area that's, 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 that people are looking at are what are called bimodal resins. And that's the kind of the molecular design of, of polyethylene um, uh, that, that particularly within pipe, um, that they're, they're finding that, that these materials have uh, a longer design life, increased pressure ratings, um, increased hydraulic uh, capacities within the material. And so this is, this is area that within pipe, these bimodal resins are finding application. And basically this is a, a tailoring of the molecular structure um, of the materials. And another area in which people are, are looking at in terms of polyethylene, it's not necessarily use, uh, but it's, it's polyethylene post-use um, into fuel. 
and they're they're finding ways to take polyethylene and converting it um, into something after it's used. Take your butter tubs or uh, your 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 milk uh, jugs, uh, and uh, instead of recycling them necessarily, uh, turn them into fuel. Um, and there's some work being done to be able to efficiently uh, do that. Uh, what you need to remember is that uh, polyethylene is essentially a hydrocarbon structure, um, and so it it is basically.